What are you doing? Ben's got his new hipster camera. Oh, God. Ben's got his new hipster camera out taking pictures. He and Mikey text because they've got the same camera. Of course they have. They they share photographs. Not in a, that way, but they, they text about. Yeah, but Mikey's got his because in Wakefield, that's a new camera. <laughs> And welcome to Help I Sex With My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, what should you do if you run out of loo roll in a public bathroom? And, how do you deal with the fallout after sending a dilemma into your own show? And Uh what, Mm. what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But... We're not usual agony ants, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert. No, we're not Jordan North, radio presenter. I'm more Rubik's Cube, you're more Oxo Cube. Oh, you've just reminded me, actually. Oh, do you need to put some on your list? Yeah, I've not. I've run out of Oxo Cubes. Thank you to Hope Fellows for that. Uh, Hope our, Fellows? Yes, our very own Julian Fellows, but not. Oxo Cubes. So thank you, Hope. Do you prefer the Oxo Cubes or the Norpots? Uh, How posh did I sound at them? <laughs> I've noticed recently. Yes. Nor pots. Uh, I like to make my own stock. Eh? I like. Now we're back. I like to make my own stock. How would you make your own stock? Well, if it's chicken Bones stock, and yeah, stuff. chicken carcass. Who's got time? Or I buy it fresh from the uh, the supermarket. But if I'm going to pick one of those, the pots. Okay. What do you prefer? Uh. If I'm making a uh, spaghetti, spaghetti bolognese yeah. um, or a chilli, I like the gnaw pots because mm. you just plop them in. But anything else, proper stock cube. Okay. Well, that's that's going to be a good episode, this, isn't Fascinating it? insight. Uh, let's Go get on, off. look at you. You've got the bloody shakes. Come on. <laughs> Chomping at the bit here. Let's uh, get on and pour the G&D. New bottle of De Bonnet, which is nice. Could you pour the gin for us, please? Um, we're going to toast... Uh, two Jean Divas, oh, who recently got married. Oh yeah. Uh, the new Miss, and they they emailed us, Mr. and Mrs. Wilkins. Oh okay. As they are now known, she's chosen to. Well, I say she's chosen to take his name. Wilkins could have been her name. Maybe he's chosen to take uh, her name. I don't know. You're like me. Mm. You with gin and the bonnet is like me with whiskey. Free Paul. I uh, just I hadn't like I can't be trusted with whiskey. Sunday night, I was watching Daisy and the Six. Daisy Jones and the Six. I was like, woke well, up on Monday morning, mm. half a bottle of whiskey. Half a bottle of whiskey. That is quite a lot, Jordan. It's quite a lot on a Sunday night. Mm. I was like, no wonder I've got a little hangover. Little one. Anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. Who are we, cho- we toasting to again? Okay? We're going to toast to Mr. and Mrs. Wilkins again. Mr. and Mrs. Wilkins. May you have many happy years of marriage together. And also a second toast to everyone who's voted for us on the British Podcast Awards website. Thank, Thank you. you. Are we going to that? We are going, aren't we? I believe so. Yeah. I don't know. Are we yeah. giving out an award? Yeah. Oh. Mm. Should be good. We might be the only ones there, but we, we are going. As always, if you need help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com. Or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexofmyboss. Or you can write to William Hanson. In the fullness of time, promises a handwritten reply on one of our own luxury greeting cards with executive self-sealed sta- envelopes. The address is on the website, sexofmyboss.com. At the time of recording, Gene Divas, we've just come back from a very important meeting mm. with the publishers of our book that's coming out very soon. Yeah. Help I Sex and My Boss, the book. We've been to meet our friends at Penguin Random House. Yes. And there was a moment where they were they unveiled on the um, presentation the dates for our upcoming book tour. More on that in due course. And uh, I was very tempted to say, oh, I was going to wind them up. But I chickened out. I was going to go, oh, yeah, on the 26th, I'm on holiday. <laughs> I thought, would this be funny? No. <laughs> Will they so, laugh? Right. <laughs> and I decided no. Guess, Gene Divas, <laughs> who has managed to book a holiday right on pretty much... The most important week of the book. Yeah, we've, we've talked about this months ago, but it, for those that are maybe have come new to the podcast, Jordan is um, uh, going to be in, back in Skegness, old Skeggy. Stressing me out. <laughs> it's just just my luck with dates. I know when somebody says something to me, because you know I'm rubbish with... But I had this book way before the book. We even started the book. Hmm. So, well, it's yeah. all right, but you, you have, we also came up with ideas for you to sell a few books on holiday, and you might have your own little stand, didn't you? And mm. you could do some sort of 
on Skegness Beach. You mm. could you could sell a few copies to the locals. But yeah, the uh, book you can pre-order now, sexandmyboss.com forward slash book. Mm. Uh, do get your pre-orders in. If, if you've heard us hopping on about it for ages, get your pre-orders in now because you'll get a lovely hardback. And we're doing some... <laughs> what? <laughs> With a luxury touch. <laughs> Oh, nice. You get luxury touch. Yeah, are we signing... Are the pre-orders signed? Not yet, but they will be. Oh, so, and they'll be signed as We've well. We've also got to do, next week, which I'm slightly anxious about, we've got to pre-record the audio book. Yeah. Now, this requires reading. Now, when we started this podcast, it was very quickly decided that, really, most of the reading is going to be done by me, for I don't know what reason. Well, 50% of the book is me and 50% of the book is Jordan. You, you talk to someone here who, on air yesterday on Radio 1, read out a text that was meant to say femininity and I said fertility. <laughs> so. And it's for exactly that reason that we have got three weeks programmed to record the audiobook when really we only need a couple of days. It's every dyslexic's nightmare writing a book, but also actually <laughs> reading, reading it. it out loud. Yes. Well, it'll be fun. Uh, you, of course, famously, one of my favourite ever Jordan North slip-ups on the radio, when you just started on Radio 1, read out a text from a listener who was uh, on their way to Ilifracombi, as, <laughs> as you read it. Ilfracombe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did I ever tell you at uni we had to do uh, a listen- Is this Michelle Jackson? Y- no. I, okay. We had to do a listening diary in my first year. Okay. And mine was listening dairy. <laughs> All the way throughout. So, yes, the, uh, the audiobook may be significantly different to what's actually printed, because Jordan might read completely separate words. I once read Stomachache as Stomashiashi as well, so... <laughs> Stomashiashi? <laughs> I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was reading one of my mum's magazines, and I was reading it out loud to it, you know, like one of those women's magazines, chat and all that. Mm. And it was like some woman that were there, and I went, it started off with really bad Stomashiashi. <laughs> I went, what? I went, says here, stomach yashi. She had a look, she went, stomach ache, you dick. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be fun, isn't it? It's going to be hours of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've got that coming up. Um, continuing the audio theme, mm-hmm. have you, re- you, you're probably not across the sort of the tech updates that are coming through. But... Excuse me? What? No, I'm not, but that's really... <laughs> well, no, because most people aren't, is what I'm saying. Most normal people aren't. You know me, I'm a Oh, bit... I thought you meant, like, emails or something I've not read. No, 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 no. The upda- If I said to you, um, what are you most excited about in the upcoming iOS 17 release, would you know anything? No, see, I thought this was, like, one of those things, because I've not read the email, and then before you know it, I'm recording a Specsavers advert, so... <laughs> it's just... I thought it was one of those type of things. Would you let that one go? No, carry on. Um, I said... I mean, you probably haven't read the emails, let's be honest, but... One of the features coming up in the new Apple operating system for mobile phones, and I'm sure Androids maybe have a similar feature coming or already there, is that it is going to transcribe voice notes and put them as a text underneath. What is the point then of... Like, the whole point of a voice note currently, in my opinion, from an etiquette point of view, is that I will send a voice note when I need to convey tone, when I need people to hear my tone in order to add something to the message. If it's then going to transcribe it underneath, people won't listen to the voice message. And that's called dictation. And quite frankly, you've got the dictation software anyway on the most phones now. And I think this is wrong. And I'm very cross that this is coming out. Just such a told you. Stop being an Apple bitch. I don't know. Androids might have this technology already. I don't know. But it's it's worrying. And I still would encourage people. I don't know if you can turn it off yet, because we don't have this feature, but I would turn it off. I would always listen to the voice message, even if it transcribes it underneath. Just as a just as an etiquette thing, modern etiquette. You know that's what our what we do. Okay. What else has been going on? What's uh, how's your week been? Um, it's been so exciting this week because Mikey and I. I don't know what went through my head in bed the other day, but I was in bed and I thought of you. Oh God, not you as well. <laughs> what do you mean, not you oh, as well? Don't worry, somebody else said. Oh really? Yeah. Carry on. Anyway, uh, I was in bed thinking of you and mince. Or mints. Oh, remember? the game we played, yeah. Yes, back in our COVID series where we had absolutely no content, um, Jordan came up with a fascinating game, which, to be fair, no, is I, quite fun. I nicked it off, off Greg James. Oh, did you nick yeah. it off Greg? Okay, fine. Well, we've, we've got an update. Uh, we now do your or your or you or you, as in your log or you all. Hours and hours of fun. 
You're doing this in bed? Yeah. With your husband? Yes. This is why I'm never getting married. <laughs> this is the sort of great fun you can look forward to in married life. Wow. Just, do you want to recap the Greg James Jordan North Mince Mince game? All right, so am I saying mince, as in mince meat, or mints, as in refreshing mints to make your breath smell nice? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mints. And he's covering his mouth. Say again. Mints. Uh, breath mints. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have another round. Okay. Mints. Uh, beef mints. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Christ. Is this it? Yeah, That. this is, is what you can look forward to if you ever get married. Really no. Do your one. Oh, yeah, do your okay. one. Okay, so this is as in Christmas Yule Log or you all as a contraction. Yule. That's the log. Correct. Yule. You all. <laughs> I'm <Or>. worried. <laughs> I am worried that this is the peak that we do on our podcast now. Yeah. Okay. It's hours of fun. To be fair, my, it does it does reduce Mikey to, to tears of laughter. I often reduce him to tears of laughter in the bedroom. So. Just recording on the M6 here, <laughs> like we always do. <laughs> so that's what you're getting up to in bed. That's what we get up to in the bedroom. Can't just Again, a... remember it's the summer, so we're not. There's nothing. Oh as yeah, I've said, you've it's... said it's, don't touch me. Yeah. Can I just have a wank like normal people? I'm sorry. Don't be disgusting. What else has been going on? Um, well, I went out with for a drink with my friend Mark, and uh, I noticed as I was Mark. Yeah. Have I met Mark? No. How many friends do you have? I'm just very popular. You are. Uh, anyway, I was. I watched. There were some men standing at the bar area where we were having a drink, and I, you know, just noticed them because they were chatting and being a little bit, a little bit loud. But whatever, clocked them. Then I later on went to the loo, and as I was washing my hands, one of the men from said bar area walked into the loo holding his drink. His pint. Yep. Walked to the urinals, put the drink down on top of the urinal, did his stuff, presumably, and then I assume, I mean, I had left by this point, then walked back up with his drink. That's disgusting behaviour. I've been known to do this before. <laughs> no, don't. It's just if there's nowhere to put your drink down, sometimes you've got to take it no, in no, with you. But he was standing by the bar, and it wasn't that busy. Yeah, but if he's got mates like mine that can be... I what? don't know. Like, they put something in it, or... Like, I don't well, they're not catch up friends. or something like that. They won't spike. Okay, them. or okay, and I, I I appreciate for girls, for example, it's more of a thing for girls, but it does happen to boys with being you know spiking drinks. This was five o'clock in the afternoon on the Thursday, however, but um, you're literally out all the time, yeah, aren't you? But <laughs> most people are in work by then. But finish the drink and then go to the loo. That that would be a, a sort of a win-win. It's, in a festival, I've done it where like, I've held it in yeah, my mouth. Yeah, you hold it in your mouth yeah. on a paper cup and then wait. What, the drink? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is it bad etiquette to take your drink to the toilet? Yes! What it's about food? Not, not, a le- n- yet. not even to mention bad hygiene. What? Yeah, but is, is that true? Could like poo particles get in your yes. pint? Poo, urine? Poo Think part- of the, especially to urinal, the splashback. You know I don't use them anyway. But Mm. Oh. oh, I think that's Jane Bolton. Just... Okay. Tell her we'll be down. Hi, Jane. Hi, we'll just... I was just coming down in five minutes, if that's all right. We'll just finish again. Thanks so much. So that's Jane Bolton coming <laughs> for the for the bonus there. Oh, my God. Jane, we can't board you from the coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, you're going down to the coffee shop to go and collect it up. Yeah. I love it. Anyway, you're going to ask me how my week's been? Yes, how's your week been? Good, thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah. 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 Good, right. Should we go to Jordan's Johnny Joke of the Week? What am I doing this weekend? Uh, you're going to a wedding. Yeah. I've not done all this week. Oh, I feel bad. Think of something I can talk about. How was Loose Women for you, Jordan? Oh, it was great. Yeah, you were on great form. You were on great form. You, you made were it... on fine form. Jordan did my favourite style of comedy... 
particularly in the context of TV, is slight shock comedy. And Jordan, to a daytime audience, brought up my sous vide, which is a method of cooking, and that I did, quote unquote, chicken in a bag, which I don't do, uh, and said that it looked like Jeffrey Dahmer goes, uh, cooks for you. And you consider the audible gasp from the audience into a laugh is exactly my sort of comedy, and it made me laugh very much. You keep saying that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I just watched that clip back continuously. I think it's very funny. It was great, and, and thanks to the Loose Women for having us on. They loved you. You were you were on very good form. Well, thank you very much. You were good too. What made me laugh before was um, because of the train strikes. Are we allowed to say this? They literally had to go into a nearby coffee shop to see if anyone wanted to come in to watch, which is <laughs> live telly anything, because there was, the audience couldn't get up. And I actually thought that audience were great. And so they literally just went into a load of local coffee shops, right? Do any of you just want to come and watch Lou's Women for an hour? Mm. Which is great. Yeah. They were mm. taken hostage by Denise Welsh. <laughs> 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 she was lovely as well. She's messaged me. They were all great. Yeah, they she's messaged great. me. Yeah. It, was such a, it was such a fun show to be on. Mm. Yeah, it was nice. It was and good. Naturally, William knows everyone at ITV Daytime. Oh, I don't know everybody. You pretty much do. Not many people left. But I mean, I know some of them. Okay. Anything else from your week? No, I'm trying to think. Sorry. Um, it's just been... At the time of recording, I've got the NTAs tonight. The National Television Awards. Oh. Yeah. Should be fun. How luxury. Got me suit. You were asking me in the taxi from Penguin Random House to hear uh, if I knew how to tie a bow tie. Hmm. Uh, and I gave you some advice. I, I will give this advice to anybody. Obviously, a proper bow tie looks a thousand times better than a fake one. Go and buy one, a proper one, from a men's outfitter. Get the sales assistant to tie it around. They normally tie it around their leg for you. And they unhook at the back. And then you just take it home flat like this. And you put it in your tie drawer or whatever, wherever you want to keep it. And then when you want to do it, it's all nicely tied. And you just hook it on at the back. Lovely. Okay. They are quite hard to tie, aren't they? They're impossible to tie. And it's always the last thing you do. You're always running late. You get stressed when you can't do it. I promise you, this will save you so much time and hassle. It's brilliant. Okay, thank you. However, it is probably a bit too late for tonight. Unless you can go via men's outfitters on the way. Okay. Will they do them in Top Man? No, they don't do them in Top Man then. Top Man's not been on for about ten years. Well, two years. Should we go to Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week? Is it my Jolly Joke of the Week? It is, yes. Welcome back, everybody. No, no, we haven't gone to the break yet. It's part of the joke, you know. Oh, I see. <laughs> Oh, I see the joke of the week has a lead-up joke of the week. And I'll it? tell you the punchline after the break. You haven't done one. Welcome back, everybody. Let's start the joke. Oh, is it? Yeah. Sorry. All right. All right, Gene Beavers, thanks for sticking with us. Welcome back, everybody. It's apparently not a good way to start a speech if you're the best man at your friend's second wedding. <laughs> My friend said he didn't understand what cloning was. I said, that makes two of us. <laughs> I spent 10 minutes trying to remember what the opposite of night was. In the end, they had to call it a day. <laughs> One more? Yeah, why not? I just found out I'm colorblind. The diagnosis came completely out of the... We've done that one, haven't yes. we? Out of the purple. All right. Do we Do we need to think of a new feature for this part no, for you? No! No, I, I strongly what? recommend we do. <laughs> Here we go. What happens if you throw a Finnish sailor overboard? Helsinki. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the break is going to be put. <laughs> Shall we go on to the listeners' problems and questions? There's not a power on earth that's going to stop us. I think this might actually save the episode, so... Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, Jordan in that break, whatever that break you call that break, was there going, oh, I don't think I was very good in that. Just, I thought you were... I'm just so needy, I don't you know. Very... You met expectations. <laughs> this is from Lisa from South Wales. Hello, boys. I recently went out for food with the guy I'm seeing. We both ordered burgers and chips. My date opted for the traditional pick it up with your hands and eat the burger approach, and I picked up my fork and knife and then proceeded to cut up the burger and put the pieces in my mouth. This was then, follow hi this was then followed by him saying, Are you posh? Personally, I don't see anything wrong with using cutlery. Sorry, great. That was great how you did that. <laughs> that was really good. Thank you. It's really brought it to life. <laughs> well done. You're very good at this. That was great. This, you will now, Gene you will now notice in the yeah. second half of this, Jordan will now overcompensate. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I've got two impressions lined up. Oh, I'm going to rescue this episode, don't you worry. 
Personally, I don't see anything wrong with using cutlery. Your hands don't get greasy when eating. I forgot to say, I bumped into producer Ben's dad as well. <laughs> this week in London. Well, I'm in the middle of a letter. <laughs> but I forgot to okay, say... Okay, well, we'll, we'll have a pause in the okay, letters after sorry. we finish this one. Um, the next day, we both asked people we work with how they eat a burger, and there were mixed responses. Am I the weirdo for using the cutlery that was provided, or have I been eating burgers wrong all this time? Thanks, Lisa from South Wales. Yes, I think you have been eating it wrong. Over to etiquette expert Jordan North. Lisa from South Wales. I think you just... A burger's like a pizza. You eat it with your hands. You don't need to cut a burger. You can cut it in half if it's like a big droopy one. Mm. But I just, yeah, you eat it with your hands, don't you? It's burger and chips. It depends how big the burger is. If it's, a let's say, a fast, a popular fast food chain burger that's quite thin, yes, that type of burger was designed to be eaten with the hands. You go to some gastro pubs now, restaurants, and the burgers are absolutely sky high because mm. they're packed with onion rings and topping and topping and topping. And Jordan, I'm going to say something to you I've never said before, but sometimes there are too many toppings in life. And so in that instance, you have to deconstruct the burger and then I would use a knife and fork. But also, Lisa's from South Wales, this person who said, are you posh? I mean, I don't know how he said it. You haven't said whether he said it jokingly or not. If he did, yeah, fair enough. But if he's sort of slightly attacking you and being an inverted snob, then um, that's not very good, so I'd dump him. But I think you eat a burger with your hands. Oh, quickly, mm. before I forget, guess who I bumped into this week? Oh, I don't know, tell me. I seen producer Ben's dad in London. Did you? Yeah. I see now where Ben gets his thrilling sense of humour. <laughs> Because his dad, I was having a well, you've, coffee. You've met David before. Yeah, I was, I was having a coffee. And his dad come up and went, "Excuse me, have you got the time?" <laughs> Sorry, he went, "Excuse me, no." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, funny." No, he's actually he's he's a lovely bloke. We were chatting for a good ten minutes. And he does look a bit like Ben, doesn't he? He looks the double of him. Mm. But anyway, yeah. Mm. Okay, well, thanks. Sorry for about that. that. Uh, hope that helped, Lisa from South Wales. This is from Leanne. Uh, hi. Did you see my granddad, Jolt? I've not seen him in ages. How is he? <laughs> He's all right, Diego. Tell him I said hello. I'll probably be around there soon. Please, lot, never look after me. Hello, William, Jordan and Ben. I need some help. My husband Luke and I have just had a beautiful baby boy called Benjamin. As much as we love being a mother and father, sometimes we need a break. So my incredibly helpful mother helped us out by staying over and watching our son for the night. We had a lovely date and returned home at around one o'clock in the morning to find my son happily asleep and my mother in her night garments watching some television in our living room. I asked how the baby was and we began, it's an advanced baby, and we began chatting about our night. But I had noticed that Luke had become very irritable and almost dismissive towards my mother out of the blue. He kept asking, shall we go to bed now? He was being incredibly rude. When we went to the bedroom, we started to have an argument about his behaviour towards my mother and I asked him, why didn't you want to talk to my mother? He replied, I couldn't sit there and talk to her because both of her breasts were hanging out of the bottom of her nightshirt. My mother does indeed have very large, low-hanging melons. So, William and Jordan, do I tell my mother why my husband was acting weird, or should I just let her think he's a bit of a knob? Love the show from Leanne. How big are your mum's tits? <laughs> um, I would, I would say to Leanne's husband, Luke, that's no reason to be shirty with someone. <laughs> Good word. <laughs> yeah. Find it funny. Come on, Luke. But but don't... So they were hanging out the bottom of a shirt? Yeah. That's big boobies. <laughs> That's big boobies. But I don't think you get irritable and, and sort of want to go, should we go to bed? I mean, you might feel awkward, but you don't get irritable. Yeah. So I think Luke's... Re I'd be cro I wouldn't say anything to your mother, but I would, I would be more cross with Luke for having such a juvenile reaction. Yeah, come on, Luke. Just... Oh, like, just don't make... And also, she still did you a favour, Luke. Don't make eye con nipple contact. Don't look at a nipple. Yeah. No. Funny sight, though. Uh, I mean, hilarious, yes. Dear William, Jordan, EPB, and Diego. Oh, for God. A few years ago, when my five children... <laughs> right, Gene Devers, producer <laughs> Ben has just... <laughs> has just said to us there, <laughs> off mic... You, you sound like you're rushing a bit, William. Can you just... Well, I didn't have much bit? more advice to give to Leanne and Luke. Okay, well, don't now be petulant and start reading this really slow. 
Lee. A few years ago, when my five Who's children... Lee? No, slowly. <laughs> A few years ago, when my five children were young, I had a childminder who came to my house. It was the summer and the water tray was frequently outside the back door of the house for the children to play with. The water tray. Childminder. Would you not call that a paddling pool? What's a water tray? What, you put ice in there? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe their children were little borrowers. I don't know. I returned... I returned from work one day and saw a familiar object floating in the water tray. Imagine my surprise. Oh. What the hell is a water tray? <laughs> imagine, it? imagine my surprise as I recognised my husband's blue dolphin-shaped silicon cock ring. The childminder was recently married, but I had gauged from other conversations that she was likely innocent of bedroom toys, so I had quickly formed the opinion that she had not realised what the item was. That's a water tray. It's just like a little... Oh. Um, what kids... Like a sandbox. It's like a raised sandbox yeah. that you stand against. That you put water in. And sand. Okay, yeah. fine. Nice, now we know. Uh, anyway... At least I figured it was better to think she didn't know than to think she allowed my one-year-old twins to play with their dad's cock ring. What is the etiquette in this situation? Do you ask and expose someone to information they cannot erase from their memory? Do you give it a wash and carry on regardless? Or, as I did, do you mark it down to experience and allow the kids a new toy? After all, reusing items is good for the environment. Many thanks. Anonymous. Yeah, um, I'd say just... If the kids are happy... And the childminders in ignorant bliss, then no arms being done. The, the question is how... Oh, actually, would it be safe for a child to play with a cock ring? Probably not. Yeah. I wonder... can't believe I've just said that sentence out loud. How did the sexual toy get from presumably the bedroom, presumably hidden... Oh, you know what kids are like. ...to the water tray? I definitely wouldn't allow them to continue using it because, as Jordan points out, safety, but mm. also weird. Because imagine if you just, you know, then it becomes sort of every day, oh, yeah, the cock rings in the water tray again. Yeah. And then, I don't know, a friend comes around and sees it. They're going to be very perplexed. Or it could be, you know what, kids like to get really attached to toys. So, like, every time you go to Butlins or go and see your parents. Yeah, they take it. it into school for show and tell. Yeah, so yeah. it's probably best to, like... Yeah, I'd, I actually, I'll go back on what I said. It's mm. probably best to... Um, and maybe the learn here is that any sexual toy, if you're going to have them, out of the reach of children is where you have to keep them. Yeah. So keep them on a high shelf. Like bleach. Yes. Or with the bleach, maybe. Medicine. Yeah. Mm. That, that would be the learn here. I'd never tell you me and my brothers all got stuck together, because have I told you this? No. I have. Well, start it. Well... Um, we were meant to be watching Dominic. My mum's upstairs doing her hair and he decided to eat some super glue. So then Ryan tried to get it off him but got stuck to his cheek and then I got stuck in Ryan's hair. And you were... All three of us. 14? Was... No, I was probably about eight, nine. Oh but my Dom God. was like a baby. Yeah. Have I ever told you about my mother and her younger brother and the axe? So they were four or five. Okay. And I did it, Jordan, and I do not regret it. Well, yeah, basically. I chopped his head off, darling. Well, That's not... the best thing I ever did. Not the head. I hope all the people involved allow me to tell the story. Um, but my grandfather was out in the garden chopping some logs with the axe. And this is where the story takes a turn. At the same time, upstairs from a bedroom window came a plaintive cry because the wardrobe had fallen on Granny. So he goes up to save Granny, his wife. And whilst he goes to do that, he puts the axe down on the tree stump and looks at my mother and my uncle Nick and says, don't touch that axe, and goes up. Well, my uncle Nick then says to my mother, he puts his finger on the tree stump and says, I bet you you're not brave enough to chop off my finger. <laughs> and that was like red rag to a bull to my mother, who picked up the axe and uh, slightly chickened out at the last minute, but cut off the tip of his finger. What? What? So then grandfather had to come down. Granddad had to come down from rescuing Granny and putting the wardrobe back up against the wall and uh, and take my uncle to hospital. Did your mum get told off? Yes, very much so. What, a day he dad? Yes. His wife, <laughs> he's had to rescue his wife from a wardrobe and then take his son to hospital because he had his finger chopped off. Yes, quite. Bloody hell. Look yeah, us on. and they were about four or five. So don't get on the wrong side of my mother, everyone. Don't tell a five-year-old to not touch an axe. No, I mean, I would have removed the axe. But to be fair, I mean, they, they Gran and Gran had run, ran a tight ship. But, um, yeah, my mother decided that that was what she was going to do. Oh, OK. 
Final one from Anonymous. Dear help, I sexed my boss. I work in IT and my girlfriend's laptop crashed, so she gave it to me to fix. Oh, God. As I was recovering the files, I noticed that she had downloaded a lot of erotic short stories with the words felch or felching in the title. I looked it up and I was shocked. Felching is defined as the sexual act of licking or sucking semen out of a partner's anus or vagina. And as if that wasn't horrifying enough, I then found some fantasy stories that my girlfriend had written which involved a shot glass, syringe and the word reverse. I'll let you come to your own conclusions. This is something I definitely do not want her doing to me, however, but she has previously given in to some of my requests. How do I tell her no? Many thanks, Anonymous. Reverse felt? I don't really get it. I'm not even going to begin to think. I think you might have to take one for team here. <laughs> not you, the person's right again. <laughs> I... Again, don't knock it until you've... Is it the... Is it... Mm, yeah. I was I mean, say, look, don't knock it until you've tried we it. We don't but. want to kink shame, but uh, for a lot of people, this is maybe not standard, which is why it's a kink and not sort of every day. Um, but again, commu- we've said this so many times, communication is important in a relationship. And before felching or anything else is going to happen, you need to communicate and not and say you're not comfortable and maybe explain why you're not comfortable, give your girlfriend in this instance the opportunity to go, well, for me it does X, Y, and Z, or why is, you know, maybe we do this as step one and see how you feel. Just talk to each other. Doesn't matter, there's no correct wording, just speak to her. Also, is it a bit wrong that he's gone through her history? Well, yes. Is that another thing? Mm. Do you know what my worry is here? Do you know what my biggest worry is here? No. That we're becoming desensitised to stuff like that. Well, you said that something happened on the radio last week that they put this down to you being desensitised because yeah. of Yeah, so basically podcast. I asked Greg James to give me a hickey live on the radio. And and did he say yes? No, he said no. No, and funny. And it was really fucking weird. I don't know why, what we were thinking. We thought it'd be funny, but it wasn't. And Can it's because, and he says he thinks it's because of this podcast. We're becoming desensitised. Well, like um, children of war. <laughs> what? Oh, so similar. Well, no, not, but. Yes. You know, we just. Like, we didn't even flinch at felching. <laughs> <laughs> Help, we didn't flinch at felching. Yeah, there we go, there's the title. There nice. That's the first ever title that Jordan's come up with. Piss off. <laughs> oh, st- he'll be sticking that on the invoice. <laughs> Let's not say sticking and felching at the same time, <laughs> shall we? Have you ever felched? I can't say, yeah. No, no, no neither no. have I. Um, but the question was, how do I tell a no? Communication. Communication. Communication is key. Yes. And maybe you should bring it up and say, look, as in what was on your laptop. Oh, she'd be mortified. Yeah. you Because you were, in, unless unless she knew that you were looking through files, for whatever reason, like, you should like, oh, and whilst you're on there, if you can see if you can find the photo of the family holiday from three years ago that would be great if she, if, if she sort of somehow gave you uh, permission to look through files that changes it but if she didn't you have got to say nothing and you've just got and that's why sometimes ignorance is bliss um f- just before we finish just, yeah before we finish this episode and just to sort of end on get a, some lunch now but... just to end the episode on a slightly uh, more savory note Last week when you wrote in about, or you wrote in, about keeping appearances Q2 special, this is me giving you an out now. If you don't want to watch it, we don't have to watch it, but you need to communicate with me. Don't wind me up. I've got you and Ben coming round now. Well, yes, yeah, fine. We can still come round. You're both coming to mine, aren't you? Yes, that bit's happening. Do you want pizza or curry? I can't be asked cocking into work now. No. I'll be, do you have a good Indian? Well, we never did the curry night, did we? Yeah, well, let's have a curry. Should we have a curry? Yeah, but midweek. We're in our 30s now, Ben. I'm not. Oh, God, he's still not, is he? No. But look, if you don't want to watch it, no, just tell I me do. now. I would love to watch... But it is the best ever comedy episode ever produced. Right, we will watch that and then we'll and watch... And then have a curry. And then we'll watch an episode of Phoenix Nights. Fine. Or Royal Family. Fine. Or just the football. Oh, is it fine? Not fine. Oh, let's just turn it into a 49. Who's yeah. playing? Anyway, 
as always, remember you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us felch on YouTube on Mondays and share us on <laughs> you your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com. You can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexandmyboss. Or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply and one of our, one of, one of our luxury greeting cards with executive <coughs> Audio self. Book. With executive piss off, with executive self seal envelopes. The address is on the website sextonmyboss.com. See you on Friday with special guest Jane Bolton off of airline. Oh.